Thank you very much, Mr. Minister Manorin. Right Honourable Joe Clark, Secretary Manorin Albright, my good friend uh, Arturo, uh, and Ken Wallach, President of NDI. Uh, thank you for inviting me to join this forum, and again, I want to reissue an invitation for tomorrow night's dinner at my embassy, where it will be served with very hot and spicy food. <laughs> Uh, the 20th century means differently to different nations. But if you ask Indonesians what it meant, uh, what are the things that changed the world most in the 20th century, I think our answer would likely be two things. First is decolonization. Uh, this is a process that radically changed the political map of the world, a process whereby some 50 states, uh, there were numbers of the UN, have grown into some 192 states today. And the second thing was the spread of democracy. Uh, Indonesia was the last country that joined what was called the third wave of democracy. Uh, when we uh, became a democracy out of financial crisis in 1998, followed by uh, elections in 1999. So democracy, particularly the spread of democracy for us, is one of the most important geopolitical and political developments around the world. And there has not been uh, a number of democracies so high as there is today. I forget what it really is now. But if you ask me what do I think would be the most powerful force changing the world in the 21st century, I would say perhaps democracy, although some are saying that democracy is in stress uh, or even contracting, as uh, Larry Diamond might argue. But I would say it's governance. Governments, if you look at the problems in Egypt, in Yemen, in Asia, uh, in much of uh, countries that are undergoing uh, uh, problems now, uh, I think government will highlight the problem. And I would argue that the challenge of democracies today, both established democracies, emerging democracies, and future democracies, is how to connect democracies with governments. Why is that important? Because democracy and governance are two different things. Some democracies are void or lacking in governance, which explains why they are having the problems that they're having. Uh, democracy alone does not resolve the climate crisis. It does not resolve corruption. It does not resolve ethnic conflicts. It does not resolve religious achievement. It is when democracy is coupled with governance that we can resolve all these things. And governance is not just the property of democracies. It can be the properties of countries that are semi-democratic or sometimes even undemocratic. So I think the challenge for us in the 21st century is how to spread governance and more importantly how to connect present and future democracies with governance. Now, one of the things that we will face in the great new world is the growth of emerging powers in the 21st century. We have a totally new political and economic landscape that continues to unfold today. Now, let me try to outline at least three factors at work as we address the rise of the emerging powers. First, I would point out that at the moment, emerging democracies do not necessarily not identify one another as fellow emerging democracies. So this is in the sense that when Indonesia develops relations with India, they say we follow democracies. But really, the corporate identity as fellow democracies, the and democracies, are not there yet. We see more one another as emerging economies. That bond is quite strong. This is how we see our relationship with Turkey, with Mexico, with Brazil, with India. But we are not there yet in terms of seeing ourselves as fellow emerging democracies. Now, when that will develop, that remains to be seen. But that is fine by Korea. Uh, Secondly, emerging democracies are developing, developing their own democratic instinct. 
uh, way of seeing their democracy in their own distinct way and a way of seeing how to externalize their democracies uh, abroad. I know this, for example, among emerging democracies, the term democratic peace does not prominently feature in their uh, political discourse between one another. Uh, countries that are proudly democratic uh, have been defensive in saying that they do not want to export their democracy uh, or reforms. So they've been quite uh, sensitive about that. Now, uh, within this democratic instinct, I noticed there is a growing confidence in the emerging powers. Uh, in Indonesia, recently, there is a poll that asks Indonesians what they think about the democratic transformation. And 85% said that the country is in the right direction. I think there's a similar poll in Brazil and India that found uh, over 85 or over 90% uh, said that they were satisfied with the direction of the country. Uh, and, but the point is, there's a high degree of confidence among these countries. And there's also a feeling that as they look forward uh, to seize their opportunities and wrestle their problems, Western nations do not have all the answers. Right? And this is something that they need to grapple on their own, but also learn from the experience of other countries uh, as well. And, uh, they are very much interested on dialogue, but dialogue on equal footing with other countries. And this is the approach that we have taken in promoting the Bali Democracy Forum, which is an inclusive, inclusive approach. Uh, we looked at the democratic map in Asia Pacific and we thought, what is the best way to advance dialogue on uh, democracy? There was an American uh, proposal of the Asia Pacific Partnership for Democracy which we support, but we said to the Americans, well, you know, this is probably not the time where America taking the lead would receive a enthusiastic response from Iraq, especially with the problems of Iraq and in Afghanistan. So we said that Indonesia take the lead. They can let an Asian country take the lead on projecting democracy in Asia Pacific. And let us take an exclusive, inclusive approach which means we invite everybody and we share notes and exchange uh, lessons uh, of our massive political development. <coughs> and we're going to invite both China and Myanmar as well into these discussions. And I'm glad uh, to say that the Bali Democracy Forum is growing now uh, using that inclusive approach and using that uh, sharing of lessons uh, experience. So uh, we will have more time to talk about it later on in this afternoon. And the third thing that I want to say is that I think in the next several decades we will see a phenomenon in the international affairs whereby emerging powers, emerging democracies, and emerging economies will gain more diplomatic space. Uh, right now, as I said, they're gaining more economic uh, confidence and also more political confidence. And what we're seeing now is a diplomatic trend whereby the emerging powers are growing, uh, are, are nurturing their interconnection between one another. I mean, Indonesia and Turkey, uh, Turkey and Mexico, uh, Mexico and Brazil. You know, if you look at all these emerging powers you brought, connecting dots among them, and you see there are more dots and more connecting dots every day. And this is going to be a diplomatic amount closer diplomatic connections between the emerging powers uh, that will uh, uh, lead what we should be uh, diplomatic plastic of the world. But having said that, I do think that within all the democracies, not just between the Atlantic and emerging democracies, there's plenty of us to discuss. There are plenty of the areas that are new to us that none of us have answers to. But areas that we can share notes on and learn from one another. Uh, let me just highlight some of these areas very quickly. One would be digital democracy. And this is something very new to my generation. It wasn't something that a previous generation knew about. 
but uh, get a lot of the data in English about how to handle the digital democracy. Secondly, this is something that is particular to Indonesia also. The rise of the rise of mass authoritarianism. The state authoritarianism has dissipated. Uh, there are no more cross human rights violations by the Indonesian government. But the mass uh, mob mentality, this the other day that there is a religious sect, a minority religious sect that was ransacked uh, and there was an incident that killed people in Indonesia. But this mass authoritarianism continues to be a problem in our democracy. Third is the decentralization, uh, the white revolution that I spoke about uh, earlier. Uh, that was the devolution of power from the central government to the states. And uh, in Indonesia now, we have a massive political uh, reform whereby every single governor and mayor are directly elected by the people. So the political pyramid is turned upside down. Right? Not just Indonesia, but many other countries are, have, are experiencing the same thing. Fourth, how do we democratize, but also modernize our politics and produce better leaders? I say this because not every democracy produces better leaders. In fact, uh, in Indonesia, there is a phenomenon whereby the new, younger generation of leaders are even more conservative and more authoritarian than the previous ones. How do we deal with this? If, how do we deal with religious and ethnic identity, which is growing, but also becoming more sensitive? Again, uh, as you know, in Indonesia, we're concerned about the burning of our Quran by a very small church in Florida. Uh, I remember one discussion that we had at the State Department, and we asked, why couldn't this be alcohol? And the answer was, because they did not kill anybody. They were, this is part of freedom of speech. But our answer was different. Our answer was, because that pastor threatened to burn the Quran, a pastor in Indonesia was stabbed by a fellow Muslim. Right? So he killed anybody in the United States, but he killed people in other places. Right? So how do we deal with this? And lastly, how do we deal, despite of the democratic transition, with issues of corruption and judicial reform, which in Indonesia, compared to other reforms, such as electoral reforms, military reforms, democratic reforms, intelligent reforms, legislative reforms, these is the judicial reform is the most difficult to pursue in the last 10 years of our democratic experience. So these are some of the issues that we can discuss and uh, try to share uh, some uh, light on uh, and uh, share experience. And I'm very glad that we're sitting here. Uh, I look forward to learning from all of you. I look forward to welcoming you to our dinner this morning.